name is Jennifer Doran. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you great. I'm trying to figure this okay, out. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. And hello, Eric. You're going to have to help us with this because uh, yeah. a lot of people have asked about the divine team that works with me in the She Shed. And I will read the first sentence I always do. Uh, it is with great love and respect and gratitude that I call upon the following to participate in this energy overall, this blank energy work for whoever, all of whom I will from here on refer to as the divine, the divine team, source. And the founders and the adepts, no idea who those are, and the universe and the Elohim and all of God's, God's archangels, including Eric, and all of the benevolent celestial constellations in the universe, and Apollo and all of the heavenly bodies in the solar system, and all of the benevolent interdimensional beings in the universe, and all of the benevolent celestial beings in the universe, like Gaia, and Yeshua, Ezekiel, Christ, and Mother Mary, and the rainbow ray guardians of light, and Archangel Michael's entire dominion. And the Ascended Masters and St. Francis, a bunch of guardian angels after that. And, you know, my higher self and the guardian angels and healing team of blank. Uh, and anything else aligned with his or her and my highest and greatest good. So, first of all, what are, let's start out with what are the founders? Okay, so the founders of what specifically? Sorry. I don't know. They're just called the founders and the adepts. Maybe Eric can help out. If not, we can yeah. the next one. So, so this is what he says to me is that this is first and foremost, oh, angel. Sorry. It's Long okay. It's calling. Okay. We got the prescription is ready. No. <laughs> that's what I ever get when I get Walgreens. This your prescription is ready. I know. That's um, what I get. That's what it is. Um, so the founders, uh, this is this is angel energy, first and foremost. This is okay. one of the very first beings. Oh, that sounds right. Okay. Yeah. Were they ever, what do they look like, Eric? So they, you know, the angels look very human-esque okay. a lot of the time. And so this oh. is what he's showing me. Uh, very large, though, sometimes very, very large, much larger than human would be, oh. um, but, but resembles more of like the human, you know, the human-esque wings, sometimes visible, not always visible. But he is saying, like with the with them, there's um, there is like energy around them that is very very powerful. Uh, color, light. There's oh. you know there is um, this kind of energy around them. Okay. Oh, cool. I can just get a mental image of them. Where do they come from, the founders? But, uh, immediately off of source. I knew it. All right. Uh, can you become human if you wanted to? The, the founders, the members of the founders? Uh, for brief periods of time, not like how we humans come and live lifetimes. It's not, it's the, the need for why we do it, they don't have. They okay. don't have the, the need to do yeah. it for the reasons that we do. Uh, jumping in and being human briefly, quickly. Yes, there is the ability to do this. Okay. What is their purpose? What What is their job description? So what he's saying to me is that they're, because they're basically one step off of source, whatever, yes, whatever you want to refer to source, basically their job is to bring everything into existence to all of the lessons all of everything wow. and so the founders really is a good name for them because it's they they are part of how everything is in existence everything everything wow um okay. could directly connected to the akashic rec records so everything that ever was is and will be oh. um yep all right so that's so cool um how many are there 
And are they always the same or some like, all right, I'm not going to be a founder right now. I'll come back in later, you know? So I always think it's weird when, when I get a question of like how many, and I get a very clear answer and you asked how many, and I heard 30. Oh, um, wow. So oh, I have no, I, I have no the idea. Same? Is that number the same always? Or it, it felt pretty consistent. Like immediately there was like 30. Um, oh. <laughs> I always think it's also, funny when I get a really specific answer, like numbers like, and dates, numbers and dates are not easy. Yeah. <laughs> so, but with sometimes numbers are finite when we're talking about a particular set of beings. Um, and so I will say this, there's at least 30. Okay. okay. I don't. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good. It, it that's feels good. like the initial, like the initial boom, here they are right off of source. Um, but that there have been some that kind of come and go or change. Okay. That, so, so there is something fluid okay. to it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now let's go on to the um, adepts. What are the adepts, Eric? So what he's showing me, and again, this is, there is angel energy here. Yeah, I figured. But that it's um oh I I I don't know how else to put this, but sort of like middle management type of so oh, okay or like medium you know mediums are like the go betweens they have like they have a lot more go between energy of being able to go between um, spirit whether spirit is incarnated or on the other side and. Yeah um this sort of this sort of thing back up to the angels the archangels the founders um it's like a go-between kind of energy cool do they work with the founders or the ascended masters yeah. or all, okay. all, all of it it feels like they work with everybody um the ascending masters the founders the archangels um and and then the the souls that are just okay. living lives and <laughs> they're runners they're they're runners basically <laughs> yes so what do yes. they look like, Eric? Usually. Um and how they're smaller. They, they feel smaller than like the founders. Yeah. And and this feels like more fluid as far as appearance, it, it, more personal preference. Oh. Wow. Um, with appearance here. So uh some extraterrestrial look, oh, okay. some human look. Hmm. Um and their energy, like I like I was saying with the other, the energy just feels a little bit different. And Eric has said this to me before with other things and readings, like energy or color, aura colors have some meaning, like when we're dealing with beings, okay? There's sure. different colors, different energetic fields means different things. So like on the other side, that is more significant than what we look like because maybe from one time to the next we don't physically look the same oh. so you couldn't you know if you were just going based on physical appearance when you were dealing with souls on the other side you wouldn't be able to tell so it's more of a reading the energy is how is how we okay. i guess more do it yeah interesting so where where are they from are they split off from source two directly or so in that regard every, i mean everything comes from source yeah well that's um true. You know, so it's, but, but it doesn't feel quite as intensely off of source as the founders did. Okay. So, so they're so, like tendrils from source. Yes. yes. Yes, exactly. Can they incarnate? Yes. Yes. But Eric is saying they don't, um, earth, you know, is kind of like, out of the heavier place to come yeah. uh, maybe more incarnations are elsewhere other than than okay. earth and why would they incarnate uh else why would they incarnate at all did, what do they do um, did they intervene in things or so it it feels like they would incarnate um in other planets when there's like um, big shifts on those planets happening um to kind of force that to happen a little bit faster because although, you know, Earth is the hardest, there are plant, the other planets that there are challenges and struggles and stuff happens, but 
um, the the knowledge of having help from spirit or, and having help from other planets or whatever is more abundant than ours is, so to speak. Okay, that's cool. This is really interesting. So, um, uh, were the adepts something before they were the adepts ever? I mean, mm -mm. The, no. the, okay. How many are there, more or less? You could give the number of digits in the number. So this feels more like hundreds. Okay. okay hundreds. Yes. And is that fluid where sometimes they're, they're, they act as adepts and sometimes they're, okay, that's why mm -hmm. I said that. All right, what about uh, the Rainbow Ray Guardians of Light? Uh, where are they from and what do they look like? Okay, so this is also angelic energy and this they come directly off of source. Like the fountain. Um, yes, because... Um, I guess, you know, when, when this all starts to happen, color is immediately there as well. You, but, but then it's so hard because everything, you know, everything that always was, has, and will, you know, is and will be. It's like, yeah. uh, there's no start, there's no end. But yes, they, it, they come directly off of source. Okay. Um, and they truly are dealing with color. Like that is, ooh. are they, are they? What do they look like? Like rays of rainbow, rain, rainbow colors? Or uh, they no, they, they would have they would have an angelic form as well. Um, wings, I do see wings. I, I, I do see wings here. Okay. Um, I, I'm not seeing any like sometimes no wings, sometimes wings. I see wings. Okay. Um, with with this. Okay. Uh, were they anything before they became guardians? No, nope, they came right off of source. Okay. Creation. Okay. Uh, why are they called rainbow ray guardians? So basically what they, oh, this is, this is funny. So they're in charge of their color. They're whatever color they are associated with. They are in charge of all the energy that comes from that color. Oh, wow. Um, so anybody who does any stuff with color or, you know, you know um, what certain colors mean, what certain energies come from certain colors. So if you're somebody like a big one is lighting particularly colored candles for certain things. Yeah. Um, to bring money in. So, you know, green is, you know, prosperity and health. So if you're somebody who works with colors, you could call directly on that guardian to help you with what okay. you're looking for in that color are they more uh are, are are they more about healing or something else like what do they do sure. to help me in, when when i'm doing my scalar work okay so yeah that's a good that's a good um way to put it so yeah healing but you you know even with your atlantis scalar it's not just about healing you, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not just healing. There's a lot of healing in it, but anything that you're trying to do within the scalar energy, um, I, I, you know, whatever, it can be associated to a color and then therefore to that guardian to help with it. Oh, okay. okay. So some of the stuff that you do, what's like one of the other things that you do that's not necessarily healing? Um, um, is, oh. I know it's so hard. To, I, I, it's so I, hard to think. There's stuff so on the many the things. Moment. A lot of it, you're right. It's not about healing. It's about you know abundance, for example. Um, yeah. Closing bad portals, opening up good ones. Yeah. Increasing energetic vibration. Uh, well, that's kind yeah. Of, um, yeah. So, yeah, and it, and it could be connected to to healing. Ultimately, you know, if you close right. portals or open portals. But you you know what I'm saying. It, it can be sure. connected to a color and then therefore linked to that particular guardian okay um how many are there so in this particular area eric is saying that it's like it's more of like the cut the, the cut like red orange yellow green blue yeah purple white it's like those colors because every other color kind of is a, a range of it so what are we talking yeah. about eight to ten i don't you know whatever base colors and and then they control the range like it's you know as the colors shift okay. it shifts to a different to a different 
<laughs> being what we could call mauve could would fall into pink you know oh yeah so right, teal right. would fall into blue so <laughs> okay um so where do those rays come from where do the rays come from they come from source is what is what okay. eric says they initially come from source but but um the angels now have you know control over them so to speak okay. so rainbow ray guardians of light so they are the guardians of light mm -hmm. okay can you tell yes. me about that oh so as far as any minute what was that? The, aquarium, the aquarium people are coming in to work oh. on my aquarium bella's gonna bark but the other dogs are inside so <clears throat> so right. it's it's not the word guardian <laughs> implies protection yeah but the colors are not necessarily under any kind of threat okay, okay? so that's it is a it Chris says it's a little bit of a misleading name because yeah. they're not necessarily protecting the colors. They're utilizing the colors to help us, to help us, to help. To guard us, um, to be guardians for us. Yeah. <coughs> yes. Okay. But, yes, but the colors are under no threat. Okay. I figured. Bella, be if quiet. If you're in charge of something, you know, yeah. if you're in charge of something, you can call yourself a guardian yeah. of it, you know? <laughs> Do they work with the collective? uh or mostly just individuals or groups of individuals no they work with the collective okay uh how many are there i don't know if i asked that question or not oh yeah so it, like eight to ten i can't quite pinpoint but it's like the colors but again it's not like the range it's like reds encompass a lot of different yeah you know color across the color spectrum and there would be yeah. one for that okay Okay, for each. Okay, that sounds yeah. Nice. All right, uh, I've had also Archangel Michael's entire dominion. Uh, who who are they? I'm sorry. I can you say that again? I didn't really hear a question there. Yeah. What is what is the you know one uh, addition part of the divine team is Archangel Michael's entire dominion. So what is that? I like what he rules over. Is that what we're? I, I think it's a it's a group okay. of things. I think. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm confused <laughs> by that. I'm confused by the way that that question is worded. So yeah, I, I'll just answer it the best I can with with what Eric is okay. kind of giving me. So, yeah, yeah. So not just Archangel Michael, but all the other archangels have a team. Mm -hmm. that they work with and that that's what i'm getting you know, that, we, that we kind of, yeah that we kind of stem off from or that we're connected to yeah um and so you know i mean archangel michael is about protection yeah um, so that would be and that eric is showing me blue that 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 kind of would oh. associate with the color blue okay. although black is also protection okay um so yeah there's like a whole group that would work within that color with archangel michael um and and other angels that aren't necessarily archangels but also souls like us human souls extraterrestrial oh. souls that incarnate like we we all connect to at least one of those groups if not multiple is what he's saying well it's like archangel michael's a quarterback and his entire dominion is the rest of the team and and, and yes. the, that team can change uh the 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 beings um or it's not is it a stable group no it can change it, it can alternate he's okay. saying like if you think about it here like uh military or police officers they might be you know kind of in, in at least in this phase of their eternal life in with yeah. archangel michael with the protection with the theme of protection um whereas you might look at like um people like nuns and and like, all i have okay. is a catholic reference but people like this would fall into the category of the white. Bella, be quiet. Um, for you know, spirituality and and holiness, this yeah. sort of thing. Oh, okay. Um, um, anything else you want to uh, share about the entire dominion of Archangel Michael? Um, really, no. It's just the, it, the main purpose is protection. Protection, right? And shielding and all that stuff. All right. Um, yeah. 
because yeah they're in my script for shielding you know people and their homes and everything mm -hmm. uh okay the ascended masters i think isn't like jesus one of the ascended masters for example yeah 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 so there's uh, there's a lot of ascended masters oh um so like so um, I, uh gone yin gone yes um yes um i'm trying to think of uh, um some others and i just am it's just not there Allah. jesus yes all of this all of this so is are they humans that have ascended to yeah okay yeah that's exactly um souls <clears throat> that have come in and and lived human lives have so even the ascend, ascended masters aren't done eric, eric is saying no real soul is ever just done learning okay. or done growing yeah but we do reach a point where and i know a lot of times people refer to it as like different levels yeah, um, but like I, different yeah. levels i don't really understand that necessarily and it doesn't really always resonate with me but um this is like one of those things where we could say that they're just at a higher level so okay. they could still incarnate but again like the angels there isn't really the need to come in um and incarnate and experience anymore okay uh, but certainly helping others who are is a big part of what um they do yes okay awesome um okay that's interesting so how many uh ascended messages there are oh, Eric? hundreds hundreds and hundreds and hundreds wow so, uh, really we're probably into the thousands of okay now uh here. apollo and all the heavenly bodies in his solar system how how did do, do they help in the, my scalar work? So this, what Eric is showing me is this is a very helpful energy with past life stuff, common oh. le <laughs> lessons, that sort of the, the sort of stuff that comes with us life after life after life. So like if you're working with somebody with addiction, this is the, an area because addiction as far as what i've been told many times by eric comes through multiple lifetimes oh yeah um so that's where <laughs> this one feels more galactic okay um yep well that's cool and what about the benevolent celestial constellations in the universe how do they help this energy what eric is saying about this is this particular energy is all about love, all about raise, oh. raising vibrations. That is yes. so cool. And we have the Elohim. I've already had a session about that, but uh, the Elohim helps me with releasing trapped emotions in a person, reuniting lost, uh, reattaching lost soul fragments. Um, it's so funny because I didn't know anything about this. But what Eric was showing me is they were kind of going around. And then when you said attaching lost soul fragments, they were running around and like gathering things. I keep them busy, man. Oh. It's true. So yeah, like five or six things for me that are just blocking. Yeah, through. yeah. They're like the um like gophers. They they're just like whatever it is that you there, they go, they have a lot awesome. of energy. They're very fast moving too. I don't know. Hmm. It, it yes it's very oh, interesting i love them they're so great uh, uh also we have the benevolent interdimensional beings in the universe so this feels more um like a, a, a bigger umbrella like they kind of help in any area that you need help in so they're they're capable of doing a lot of stuff okay okay very very high vibration um but they're yeah. not just specific to a certain thing they're they're they kind of i guess maybe boost the whole the whole thing they boost the energy of the whole thing oh cool uh benevolent celestial beings in the universe of course we have in our solar system that would include gaia but the other planets and celestial beings uh what do they do i'm what i'm seeing is Oh God, I'm seeing like, like the the you know like the the web of how everything connects. Oh, and, okay. And works and like so geometry. Like, 
yeah like flashing light down through the hole i don't know what that that is but um it's very interesting infusion um but across the galaxies i guess i don't um and utilizing he's saying see the thing is with the scalar energy what he's saying is that it's um like really just on earth we've just touched the surface of what it actually can do yeah and so this these beings were were helping to get the information out there more um oh, like the scalar energy energy information that travels oh okay that like from my intent scripts yes oh so yes. that's an action from yeah, being able to harness to energy <clears throat> so what they're saying is that like harnessing energy that doesn't necessarily like exist or isn't recognized on this planet yet uh-huh um and kind of um amping it up here so you're you're a trailblazer in this regard so you're kind of at the beginning end of scalar becoming popular here 50 years from now 100 years from now there's basically going to be scalar technology that right now we can't even fathom like what what the scalar energy can do okay and so these beings are kind of help bringing that to light oh awesome now the tall white adrian i guess he's considered one of the celestial beings right Mm, yeah okay uh, all right. The universe is also in my divine team. What does the universe do? I guess that's a being of sorts, has consciousness, etc. Yeah. Are we talking about Earth or beyond Earth? Or because uh, Gaia is the Earth. Our, yeah. I guess our universe that we uh, are. This this feels like. Um, like grounding energy uh-huh. i've got grounding stabilizing energy okay. um also from earth got gaia yeah i was um, gonna like gonna the stabilizing gaia. grounding yep Gra- ground yes yeah because so if basically what eric is saying about this is if we didn't have that grounding energy from earth in the universe we'd be like um because we haven't evolved yet because we're not actually in the fifth dimension yet yeah we need that grounding energy that from the from gaia and the universe uh, yeah. so that creates the balance oh i see now the elohim I also used to cut ancestral dna and to clear out old karma that no longer serves mm-hmm. is, that, yep. is that correct perfect <clears throat> and also i use archangel michael i hope i'm asking the right person to bring each person's masculine and feminine energy into perfect balance. Does he does he do that, or does he so, also employ like Gaia? Or... Yeah, there's definitely others that help with that. So, and here's what Eric was saying when when you were asking that. It it doesn't matter. Like if you were asking somebody specific for help with something, and they don't necessarily work in that arena they will get the help for you yeah okay so it's it's the intention so when you were asking about that with archangel michael Mm -hmm. i did feel like there is somebody else that he calls on to help balance the masculine and feminine energy okay could be the person's higher self or healing team too yeah they're part of the divine team this is really but yes keep asking keep asking for help with that there's no no problem with that Okay, so is there anything else you want to say about my divine team? Do I, have, am I missing peop, things that I need to add or? Uh, Eric? No, you don't need to to add anything. Eric smiled and said you're definitely keeping them busy, which of course you know they they don't really have time like we do, but you're definitely um, really uh, just doing really well with it. Um, you're you're perfect about thanking them with your gratitude you don't need any Ooh, uh, and when i do when i read the script i i kiss some of them when i yeah say their names it's really weird no uh, no it, it's perfect just, there's nothing that you such, need to add or change i'm just so honored and awe-inspired and grateful that little old me is allowed to you know, like work with them or under them so anything else yeah. you want to say about these components of the divine team eric before we close no, just just keep keep it up. 
All right. Well, we're going to work hard tonight and tomorrow. Well, today and tomorrow. I'm busy, too busy. Yeah. Uh, okay. I love you. And I want to ask you something after I stop recording, though. Uh, yep. I love you. And uh, you guys be sure to share and hit the notification bell and subscribe. All right.